can professional bass fishing and the organization survive another incident like we had in 2019? Can the sport handle any more indecisiveness and drama? And why is there such a great divide between the anglers and the organizations? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Before we get started, I want to just say, if you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and thank you. Honestly, the last couple months, I've said this in the last few videos, has been absolutely astronomical in terms of views, subscriptions, and other things. And I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart that there are people watching and commenting and being part of my family. Because if you're here watching this, you're part of my family. Now I want to make this very clear up front. This isn't about Major League Fishing or Leets or any organization in general. What we're hearing recently is that there's a lot of anglers that are unhappy with some of the past rules or some of the things that are going on within their organization. And what happened in 2019 with Major League Fishing starting the Bass Pro Tour and those anglers leaving the organizations to go fish BPT was something that changed the outcome and the trajectory of fishing or professional fishing forever. And I'm not really sure the sport can handle another 2019. And while there's lots of people that are going to say this is all based on technology and the rookies and all that stuff, that has a little bit to do with what's going on. But in this video, we're not really going to talk about that. What I want to talk about in this video is what we're seeing and hearing from the anglers about what's going on inside the organizations and how unhappy they seem to be right now. And while there's been lots of people that have to be vague in their videos about what they're talking about, that's part of the problem that's happening. Anglers should have the opportunity to speak up for themselves and their opinion without feeling that they're going to be fined and hurt or even kicked out like Watson was. Now we've seen videos from lots of anglers recently we all thought that the Major League Fishing was where all the problems were. We're now seeing that the elites have just the same amount of problems. I don't know if one has more than the other, but what we're seeing is that the elites and the anglers are unhappy with what's happening. Some of it stems from these new class of rookies that took the opportunity to skirt the rule as much as possible to gain an advantage that the elite anglers couldn't do. But that wasn't an open rule at the time. So they didn't break any rules. So anglers that are unhappy should have voiced that opinion before this year. And that's where part of this stems. A lot of anglers have to, like I said, have to be vague in their videos or their comments because they're unhappy with a lot of rules. And when anglers start talking about getting together and finally having an anglers meeting that should have happened a couple years ago, then that starts to the snowball starts to fall down the hill. And I want to make it really clear. I don't think that if the one organization or the other organization goes away, I don't think that helps the industry. I actually think that makes the industry collapse. But there needs to be more angler interaction with the organizations to make it better for them. Now at the end of this video I would love to hear your comments and tell me what you think the anglers should do or the organizations should do to make things better. Here's my opinion. So for years we've had the same payouts and entry fees have gone up. Sponsorship dollars have collapsed because of technology or whatever it is. But both those things need to increase and decrease. And there are plenty of anglers that don't make enough money to put food on the table or gas in their truck for the next tournament. And they have to stress out and it changes the way you fish. Sponsorship dollars is how an angler makes it. And these days the sponsorship dollars aren't as abundant as they were years ago, especially during COVID. So decreasing entry fees, increasing tournament winnings is crucial if the anglers want to succeed or continue to be professional bass fishermen. As crazy as this is gonna sound, my next thing is about reducing the fields in each tournament. I don't think there should be legacy exemptions. I don't think there should be any exemptions. I think if you wanna fish on the leets or you wanna fish on the BBT, you need to qualify for it. If you're giving someone an exemption, no offense, that is not, would never ever make it back onto leets if they drop back to the opens then they shouldn't be on the elites. So no exemptions. My third thing is I think that organizations need to be drastically more transparent. 
I don't think the Anglers should hear two or three months after the tournament on the people that got penalties. I think if they if you get penalized, you should know it the week of the tournament. If someone's broken the rule, give them their penalty immediately. Let them serve that penalty then. I think the organizations need to be more transparent with the anglers on the penalties, and also they need to be more transparent with the fans too. And I understand for years Bass has had this thing, don't let bad press go out on us. I understand that. However, when we the fan are starting to speculate and assume what's going on, then we start having our own opinions on those anglers. And that might be a good thing, but in a majority of cases, it's a bad thing. If you're going to be upfront and honest and transparent right away, then the fans are going to respect the, the organizations more. Because hiding things and playing games is not what we want anymore. My next suggestion, and this is just my suggestion, and I want to hear your suggestions in the comments below. I don't think we should have eight hours of live TV, live coverage. As much as I will watch eight hours, I might be the one person that does that, or the very few. I think that you should have the live coverage in the morning and the live coverage in the afternoon. I think that in the middle of the day when the fishing just stinks, it just makes it really boring. The other thing is, is I think they need to schedule places where forward-facing sonar isn't so dominant. I think that if you get a spot where there's lots of overhanging trees and shell beds and there's there's docks and there's pitching and all that good stuff that we all want to see, it's that's better fishing for us than someone staring down at a video screen or their video screen for 25 minutes and making five casts. I think forward-facing sonar has played a big part of where this sport is right now and at times i'm questioning if this really is a sport because this is the truth and this is going to hurt a couple people's opinion and i don't mean to hurt your view or your opinion but bass fishing is boring that's just the truth it's boring it's boring to watch but if you're a diehard it's still interesting in some point but it's boring. They want to see the drama. They don't want to see an angler staring at his front of his deck, not talking, not casting, and just running a trolling motor with this trolling motor doing this back and forth. We as fans don't want to see that. So I think the organizations need to figure out what the best opportunity, the best times to do live fishing is. Here's another one. I think the organizations need to start listening to the anglers. If you listen to Gerald and Matt and uh, Chris and all these people, even listen to Trait, because Trait's hearing a group of anglers talk to her about their issues and she's just telling us what she feels is the problem. And she's right to do that. There's no problem with that. However, I think that if we're just going to throw shit on the wall and hope that it sticks, that's that's where we get things wrong. I think we need to be make sure that we're saying the story or the news as correctly as possible without being biased on one side or the other as much as that's really hard to do but the anglers have said we haven't had a meeting in two years and that's on the anglers it's one thing to complain about everything that's going on but if you're not trying to correct it within your group then you're just making it worse so the anglers need to have a voice in what's going right and what's going wrong and what rule changes is are happening because there is a train wreck that could possibly happen that none of us want to see so anglers get together stop talking about it and do it and then let those people at your organization know the findings or your problems and then work out those issues with that organization I almost feel like there needs to be a third party like uh, someone intermediate between the anglers and the, the organizations and come together and say here are the issues with the anglers are you fixing them can you fix them and then go to the organization and say what are your problems with the anglers are they not doing this are they not doing that but there needs to be something that happens between them and they need to be doing those meetings on a regular basis because when we let things pile on top of each other for two plus years then when it hits it's a complete shit show so anglers get your stuff together I almost swore there get your stuff together and do it you can't make things better if you don't talk about it as a group lastly we talk about how we're trying to grow the sport and 
In COVID, we grew it because we had anglers that weren't able to do anything and they went out fishing, but we've lost those anglers. We're not teaching our youth the right way to fish. By this, I mean, I have a friend, it's a new friend, that has told me that in his son's high school fishing team, they've had four or five incidents of anglers cheating. And that has a big effect on what's going on in this industry right now. There are many anglers that believe because they're so, everyone's so used to cheating that they don't realize that they're cheating all the time. And that hurts the reputation of the bass organization. Now, when I say bass organization, I don't mean bass. I mean the organizations in general. These anglers are being taught that if they don't cheat or don't skirt the gray areas, that they can't win. And there's black and white. Either you cheat or you don't cheat. And I'll give you a perfect example. I think in 2013 or 2014, I got the opportunity to go pre-fishing here in Florida with Kevin Van Dam. Now during this time it was, bass were betting. We went to Lake George and, and Kevin was on the front of the boat and I was on the back of the boat and I was asking all these horrible questions. And I'm sorry, Kevin. Let me just say that right now. I'm sorry, Kevin. He was a good sport about it. Uh, but he was out there running his trolling motor, looking for beds and marking them on his GPS or whatever it was at that point in time. And I remember, really remember, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a giant bass. Now, when I say giant, probably pushing 10, 11. And I yelled, probably screamed like a girl. I'll take the grief for it. Look at that fish over here. Now, at that point in time, Kevin put his pole down and he didn't even look at me. He steered the boat to the right and then said, we got a little bit away. And then he said to me, Steve, you can't do that. And I said, why? And he said, that's giving me help for the tournament. I said, oh, I'm really sorry. He said, I don't mind if you see the fish that I see after I've seen them, but I can't have you point out fish for me. That's against the rules. Now this is 11 pound fish. But that's the kind of integrity that a lot of bass anglers have. And that's happened to me a couple times. I had it happen somewhat with Brandon Card too. He didn't want to take me fishing on Pickwick because he knew that there was a tournament out there that year and I had made three casts off a dock into Pickwick. But that's the, the mentality of a lot of anglers or a lot of new anglers and old anglers. But if they're in high school and they're being taught that they have to cheat to win, then we are failing as parents and as anglers helping new kids fish. And I question what we're teaching our youth as a bass fisherman because I hate to hear stories like that. Now, here's where I ask you, what are the things that you see in here that the organization should do more of? Let's keep it as much not about technology, even though I think there'll be at some point, technology will be a big thing. I don't think they'll ever get rid of technology because there's too much money in it. And Bass is already looking for investors. But I also don't think that if you reduce the amount of transducers or reduce the size of the screens, that that actually hurts the anglers too. The anglers that are scopers are so dialed in that they, they have changed the layout of how fishing is. And for veteran anglers to go back and say, well, these guys are only doing good because they scope, we all have to, know, we all have to realize you're taught how to fish at a young age before you get the electronics and the, the technology. So most of these kids probably, and I say kids in the nicest way, most of these young adults or most of these young anglers can fish the spectrum of fishing. Now are they better at scoping than they are pitching a, pitching a bait? Probably. But they still can catch fish overall because they've learned how to do it before they got to scoping. But let's try to keep this as much about things that we see or things that we hear from other anglers that are that make them disappointed. So comment below and tell me what you think. I'd love to know because I'd love to make a second video and just go over 
all of the comments that you guys say. And I will if you want me to. Just say, Steve, I want to see my comment in another video. That's all. Don't say that and then not say anything else, though, please. Because that would be really weird to do a video on it. So thanks for hitting that like and the subscribe button. Thank you for all the people that are new subscribers and new fans and people that comment nonstop. I really try to get to all of them. If I don't get to all of them, don't take it personal. Because sometimes, like in the video with the weights and fish, there was 15 or 1800 comments. I really don't have enough time for that. But in these videos, I try to comment all the time. It's the shorts that just, you can get 80 million comments. And it just, well, you don't get 80 million, but you get a lot of comments. And it just doesn't, I can't reply to everyone. So welcome to the Seaman family if you're just subscribing. Comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take your kid fishing. Get your fish on. This is the second time I've done this video, and hopefully it turns out better than the first one. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.